You've probably heard the basics. Space is a vacuum. It's cold. It's full of stars. And somewhere out there, there's a billionaire trying to tweet from low Earth orbit. But if you think that's all there is to it, buckle up. Because the universe is a whole lot weirder than your fifth grade science textbook ever dared to suggest. Black holes aren't just cosmic vacuums. Planets can rain molten glass sideways. And time, it does whatever it wants once you leave Earth's comfortable little gravity blanket. Let's peel back the curtain and explore the kind of bizarre truths that even sci-fi writers sometimes leave out. Starting with a classic cosmic oddball, the sun. We all know the sun is hot. It's why we wear sunscreen. Why Earth isn't a frozen wasteland and why cats love windowsills. But here's what you probably haven't been told. The sun sings. Well, not in a way we can hear directly, but in space science terms, it vibrates like a giant, flaming gong. Thanks to a field called helioseismology. Yes, that's a real thing. Scientists have discovered that the sun has internal sound waves bouncing around inside it. These waves create literal vibrations across the sun's surface. Think of it like a cosmic subwoofer, thumping in deep space silence. The notes it produces are way too low frequency for human ears, but with the right instruments, we can observe the sun's rhythm like a DJ watching sound levels bounce. And if that isn't strange enough, these sound waves help researchers understand what's going on inside the sun without having to roast a thermometer. But if you think that's wild, wait until you find out that gravity in space can, quite frankly, bend the rules entirely. We're talking about black holes, the universe's biggest drama queens. Imagine a region of space where gravity is so intense that even light, the fastest thing in the universe, can't escape. Welcome to the black hole, the cosmic equivalent of a do not disturb sign that actually enforces it. Black holes form when massive stars run out of fuel and collapse in on themselves. But they don't just become dense, they turn into space's ultimate point of no return. The center is called a singularity, where all known laws of physics curl up into a fetal position and cry. Around that is the event horizon, basically the universes, you're not coming back from this line. Now here's where it gets weird, thanks to a phenomenon called spaghettification. And yes, that's the actual term. If you fell into a black hole feet first, gravity would stretch you out like noodles. Your feet would experience so much more gravity than your head that you'd become a very unfortunate string of atoms. It's not painful though, because you'd be, you know, obliterated Oh, and get this, black holes can evaporate. Hawking radiation, named after the legendary Stephen Hawking, is a theoretical type of radiation that lets black holes slowly lose mass over time. So even these monstrous cosmic gluttons might eventually just fizzle out, quietly, like the end of a bad party. Let's not even get into the possibility that black holes could be gateways to other universes. That's for another video. For now, Let's steer clear of the cosmic blender and drift toward something surprisingly livelier, space weather. When you think of weather, you probably picture cloudy skies or that one time your barbecue got rained out. But space has its own kind of weather and it's not exactly gentle. It's caused by high energy particles and radiation belched out by our very own sun. Solar flares, for example, are massive explosions on the sun's surface that release tons of electromagnetic radiation. Then there are coronal mass ejections, which basically sound like the sun throwing tantrums by launching plasma clouds across the solar system. If one of those smacks Earth head on, it can disrupt satellite signals, knock out GPS, mess with power grids and even ground flights. One solar storm in 1989 was strong enough to knock out power in Quebec for hours. And back in 1859, the Carrington event, a massive geomagnetic storm, made telegraph lines spark and set some on fire. Imagine what that would do to our internet-reliant lives today. No TikTok, no Netflix. Civilization might collapse, but it's not just humans who notice. Migratory birds and some fish species rely on 
Earth's magnetic field to navigate. Big solar storms can mess up those signals, leaving them flying in confused loops like someone rebooting Google Maps mid-flight. We don't get hit by these space weather bombs too often, but when we do, it's not just science, it's survival. Fortunately, space agencies now keep an eye on solar activity the same way we track hurricanes, just with fewer umbrellas and more radiation shielding. Now that we've survived that sunburn, let's visit a planet where the weather doesn't just burn, it stabs. Say hello to HD 189733B, a planet so terrifying it makes Mercury look like a weekend spa retreat. This deep blue exoplanet orbits a star about 64 light years away, and it's best known for one thing. It rains molten glass sideways at over 5,000 miles per hour. Yeah, let's unpack that horror. First off, HD 189733b is a hot Jupiter, a gas giant that orbits extremely close to its star. It's tidally locked, which means one side always faces the star and gets roasted non-stop while the other side is stuck in eternal darkness. The temperature swings are so brutal that winds whip across the planet at speeds faster than a speeding bullet. And those beautiful blue clouds? Don't be fooled. They're made of vaporized silicates. When the temperature drops just enough, those silicates condense and fall back down as literal glass rain. Then the planet's super hurricane level winds come in and launch that glass sideways like a million tiny knives. Imagine standing there. First, your face melts. Then it gets sandblasted by glass. Not the most welcoming vacation destination. HD 189733b isn't the only planetary nightmare. We've found others that rain molten iron. Ones that are tidally torn apart, and even rogue planets that drift through space with no stars at all. Just cold. Lonely giants in the dark. So if you ever start complaining about the weather in your hometown, remember, at least it's not raining knives. Coming up next, we're zooming out to something truly mind-bending. How time itself starts to behave differently out there. Time in space doesn't work the way you think it does. Here on Earth, time feels pretty steady. You go to sleep, you wake up, you forget it's Monday. Simple stuff, but in space, time gets bendy. Thanks to Einstein's theory of general relativity, we now know that time can actually slow down depending on how close you are to a massive object, like a planet or a black hole. This is called gravitational time dilation, and it's not science fiction. It's measurable. Astronauts on the International Space Station age, just a tiny bit slower than us on Earth because they're orbiting in slightly weaker gravity. It's only a few milliseconds over a year, but still, space is literally making them younger. But now, let's talk about something even weirder. Remember black holes? If you hung out near one, and somehow didn't get obliterated, time would crawl for you compared to someone far away. A minute for you might be hours, days, or even years for someone else. The closer you get to the event horizon, the slower time goes for you. And if you cross the horizon, time, at least from the perspective of an outside observer, literally freezes. This concept actually showed up in Interstellar, and surprisingly, the science behind it wasn't just Hollywood fluff. NASA physicist Kip Thorne helped with that film, and the black hole time warp scenes were grounded in real physics. So, yes, time is relative, and space doesn't just mess with your GPS, it messes with your entire perception of reality. Now, let's shift away from black holes and brain-bending physics and float into something that feels more like a cosmic party trick water. On Earth, water obeys gravity. It pours, splashes, and gets your socks wet when you least expect it. But in space, water becomes a completely different creature, one that floats, wobbles, and sticks to everything like an over-affectionate jellyfish. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station have to deal with this blob behavior every day. In microgravity, water forms perfect little spheres, and they just Hang there. You can poke them, split them, even drink them straight from a floating bubble. It's like watching a nature documentary about liquids that forgot how to fall, want to brush your teeth in space. 
You have to squirt water from a pouch, blob some toothpaste into it, then kind of mash the whole mess around in your mouth and swallow the foam. Spitting is not an option, unless you want your crewmates silently judging the saliva glob now floating past their faces. Even things like washing hands or bathing are completely different. There's no faucet. Instead, you press a packet and coax some water into your palm, then rub it around like a tiny water spirit. Surface tension makes it cling to your skin and objects, which is cool until it decides to bounce off and cling to the wall. One time, astronaut Chris Hadfield even showed how you can trap air inside a floating water blob and create a kind of weird space aquarium. Honestly, the blob should have its own reality show by now. Water may be the universal solvent, but in space, it's also the class clown. Next up, we're heading into the realm of mysterious radio signals and cosmic whispers that have scientists scratching their heads and possibly wondering if we're really alone out here. The weird truth is, the universe keeps sending us weird signals and we have no idea why. Every so often, Earth's radio telescopes pick up something weird. We're not talking about alien mixtapes or a galactic group chat, but mysterious fast radio bursts or FRBs that appear out of nowhere and vanish just as quickly. These bursts are ultra-powerful, last only milliseconds, and often come from billions of light years away. What makes them even more mysterious is that we still don't fully know what causes them. Some scientists think they might come from exotic neutron stars or magnetars, basically stars with magnetic fields strong enough to erase your hard drive from across the solar system. Others think they could be caused by black holes or even some unknown astrophysical event we haven't figured out yet. And then there's the juicy part. Some FRBs repeat. One in particular, called FRB121102, has a pattern. It chirps out bursts on a cycle, like a really shy DJ with commitment issues. The regularity made headlines because, well, regular signals tend to feel intentional. And whenever something feels intentional in space, people start whispering about aliens. To be clear, no, we don't have proof of alien contact. No little green guys have RSVP'd, but space is noisy, and some of those sounds are coming from places we can't even see yet. There was also that time scientists thought they discovered a strange signal in 2015 from a star called HD164595, it was later explained away, probably as interference. Still, that moment sparked a global wait, what, in the astronomy community. So, if space is trying to call us, it's doing it with a lot of static and zero customer support. Now, let's head into our next strange territory. Planets that are literally made of lava. You know those sci-fi movie planets where the surface is just molten rock, rivers of fire, and the sky looks like it's angry at you? Turns out, those aren't just dramatic set designs. They exist, and they're hot enough to roast your atoms. One example? Say hello to 55 Cancrii, a planet so close to its star that the surface heats up to about 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,900 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt iron. And guess what? The planet might actually have rivers of molten lava flowing across it. It's a super-Earth, meaning it's rocky like our planet, but far more intense in every way. Scientists think one side is constantly scorched by its nearby sun, while the other side might, just might, be slightly less lava-filled. The planet is tidally locked, so the same side always faces its star, and the heat imbalance creates wild atmospheric behavior. There's even speculation that volcanic activity on this planet is non-stop, like a lava lamp turned up to 11. Some models suggest that the entire surface could be shifting, bubbling, and reshaping itself constantly under pressure. But 55 Cancri E isn't the only volcanic hellscape. Other planets like K2-141b have been predicted to have entire lava oceans and rain made of rock vapor which is every bit as horrifying as it sounds. Imagine a place where you could literally boil, then get pelted with evaporated minerals for good measure. 
These worlds are so wild, they make Earth's most extreme volcanoes look like a backyard grill. But zooming out from molten chaos, there's something even more massive waiting in the background. A structure so vast and complex it makes entire galaxies look like specks of dust. We're talking about the cosmic web. You might picture space as a bunch of stars scattered randomly like cosmic sprinkles. But zoom out far enough and the universe starts to reveal something eerily structured. It's called the cosmic web and yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. A massive network of filaments made up of dark matter galaxies and gas stretching across billions of light years. And here's the creepy part. We're just hanging out in one little corner of it, like a dust bunny in a cosmic attic. The filaments themselves are like the universe's highways, funneling matter and forming clusters of galaxies at the intersections. These intersections, by the way, are called nodes, and they're where galaxy clusters tend to form. Between them are vast, mostly empty voids, which are basically the deserts of the universe. Lonely, dark, and weirdly silent. Scientists only started mapping the cosmic web in recent decades, using data from massive sky surveys and gravitational simulations. And while we can't see dark matter directly since it doesn't emit light, we know it's there because of the way it tugs on everything else, like a ghost puppeteer. So yes, we live in a galaxy, that galaxy is part of a group. That group is in a cluster. That cluster is one thread of a universe-sized spiderweb. And somewhere out there, billions of other clusters doing the exact same thing. It's enough to make you feel small, but also kind of like a VIP guest at the biggest structure party in existence. We've covered a lot of cosmic weirdness. Our singing sun, overly dramatic black holes, and planets that rain molten rock. But to wrap things up, let's pause and ask one of the strangest and most unsettling questions in all of space science. Why does anything exist at all? Let's not sugarcoat this. According to some of our best scientific models, the universe should have canceled itself out before it even got started. That's right. The truth is, matter, the stuff you and I are made of, technically shouldn't be here. The thing is, every time matter is created, Antimatter is supposed to show up too, its evil twin with the opposite charge. Same mass, same shape, but ready to annihilate its partner on contact. When the universe began with the Big Bang, it should have created equal parts of both. And if that had happened, boom, total annihilation. No stars, no planets, no galaxies, no awkward first dates, just nothing. But clearly, that didn't happen. You're here. So am I somehow matter one? Barely. The strangest part is, we still don't know why. Physicists have been running experiments for decades trying to figure out where the imbalance came from. One idea is that there's some slight difference in the way matter and antimatter behave. An asymmetry so subtle it took supercolliders like the Large Hadron Collider to even detect it. Sitting beneath the French-Swiss border, the LHC smashes protons together at nearly the speed of light, recreating conditions just after the Big Bang. These high-energy collisions give scientists a rare glimpse into how particles behave at the most fundamental level, and whether matter has some built-in advantage. Another possibility is that antimatter got exiled to a different part of the universe we can't see yet, or that maybe, just maybe, some unknown law tipped the scales in matter's favor right at the beginning. But until we know for sure, we're left with one of the most humbling facts in science. We exist because somewhere along the way, the universe might have cheated just a little. It's weird. It's wild. And it's the kind of mystery that keeps physicists up at night and keeps the rest of us staring at the stars in stunned silence. So yeah, space isn't just weird. It's aggressively, unapologetically bizarre. It bends time, sings silently, rains fire, and occasionally whispers into our telescopes like it's trying to keep us guessing. The more we learn, the weirder it gets. And somehow, that just makes it even better. If you enjoyed this journey through the strangeness of the cosmos, don't forget to subscribe for more mind-blowing science. Space may not make sense, but that's part of the fun, and we're just getting started. See you next time.